morning. Good to see you here. I'm glad you survived the great power outage of Alt 13. It was, uh, my, my power came back on, but my, my clock was wrong, so I'm glad that I had my cell phone set to go the alarm this morning. But glad that you've made it today. It's going to be a, 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 an exciting day. So much going on. I'm going to have to follow along in the bulletin because we've got different things at different services, and I'll have to, have to follow along and make sure I don't get lost. But a lot going on. We've had a great weekend. Had the most interesting birthday party yesterday for John Robert. Those of y'all, most of y'all heard John Robert fell two days before, the day before his actual birthday and broke his hip. So he was in the hospital for his birthday party, but he appeared at his birthday party by the magic of the internet. And it was interesting. People would walk in, John Robert would say, hello, how are you? It, it, it got me worried knowing John Robert. I know John Robert plans to outlive us all, but if he ever does go, I think he's gonna show up at his funeral by internet. I, that would be his nature. But uh, he is doing extremely well. He's still in the Columbus Hospital. And uh, as I said, he did get to attend his birthday party via the internet. A lot going on. We're sending a mission team off to UMCOR, and we will we'll have a prayer of commissioning for them at the close of the service. Our youth choir is here with us today. We'll recognize our treasure hunters. Just a lot going on in the life of the church, and a lot going on even in this service, this Pentecost Sunday. I uh, do have some, a couple of bits of sad news. Uh, Rebecca Nash passed away last Thursday night. Uh, her memorial service will be next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. There'll be a memorial service at 3 o'clock here, and there'll be more information later in the week, but Rebecca ba Nash passed away. Another person that's, that's known to many of our church, uh, our mission teams have gone to Anchorage several times and visited with the First Samoan United Methodist Church, a wonderful group of people. Their pastor, Reverend Maga, passed away this week. He had been ill for some time and uh, passed away, and he was kind of the anchor of that church. When we take the youth up to Alaska, this time we won't be working with them this time because there's some things kind of in flux there but we are going to worship with them and carry uh, carry our greetings to them but a, a number of people in this church have re had met Reverend Maga and he was a, a huge Samoans tend to be big people but he was a huge big-hearted man and, and he will be very much missed by that community and we want to pray for that church because they will be in a good bit of a good bit of flux right now a lot going on in the life of the church. Please be sure to take your bulletins with you. Be sure to sign the attendance pads that we have in the pews. And now take your bulletin. Let's turn to our call to worship and stand, please. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to Him. As I rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your spirit that fills your church and fills this church. Bless us as we worship today. We are here as disciples of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 61. Come thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise. Number 61.
understanding and share our faith together through the Apostles' Creed. Let's unite this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. from the Messenger's Youth Choir.
never hurt again If you're lost and lonely If you're broken down Bring all your troubles Come lay them down All you sinners And the weak at heart All you helpless On the boulevard Wherever you are now Whatever evil you found Bring all your troubles Come lay them down We are tied to the same old failings Finding shelter in things we know We are all dirty Like corrupted small towns We bring our troubles troubles lay them down all you rich men and the high above all those with and without love all you burdened and you broken down bring all your troubles Come lay them down. Come lay them down. Come lay them down. Come lay them down. Come lay down. If you lost it, no. God will listen to you 
wonderful day of performances. But we're glad to have them with us this morning, and it's been a very special, special program. And uh, they will have a full choir tour this summer, so we will hear some more of their other part pieces later on. But right now, we have another special moment. We're going to honor our treasure hunters. And Carrie Beth, you going to tell us about this? <laughs> Good morning, and thank you for letting us come before you this morning and to honor, uh, recognize a group that's finished another year of Treasure Hunters. And for those of you who are not familiar with that, it's a program our church began a number of years ago um, based on scripture memory uh, for four-year-olds through sixth, grade, sixth graders. And so anytime there's a Treasure Hunter checkoff that you might see in the bulletin, that's an opportunity for these children to come and recite the memory verses and other things um, that they've learned. And when they do that, they get a sticker and get a piece of candy and uh, collect quarters. Uh, and the quarters go to a mission uh, project, which this year, the mission project, the quarters they'll present this morning in the offering, um, will go to Heifer International specifically to purchase three rabbits, honeybees, and a flock of geese or chickens or ducks, you know, to help a family uh, provide for their needs. So, which is all uh, very important, uh, a thing that we want to do with this program. But also, the overall goal is to help these children plant seeds so that it, throughout their life, they'll be able to recall the promises of God through Scripture, you know, that God is love, that we are to serve one another, that um, He is our uh, refuge and our strength, and that He is with us, and that His rod and staff comfort us, those type of things. So uh, I do appreciate you supporting this program in our church. So we'd like to congratulate and recognize this year's participants, and I'd like to pay a special thank you to uh, those that helped coordinate the program. Always a thank you to Miss Jane, uh, but also Kristen McCaskill, Mandy Conrad, Robin Rimitig, and Amy Ackerson. So, so at this time, we'll call each participant up that completed their program, and they'll be given a little uh, happy and certificate, and they'll be able to present their quarters and the offering. And uh, so, and at the end, we can congratulate them all. So, First to can come forward is Allie Randall for the four-year-old program. <laughs> the next for the five-year-olds, we have Catherine McCaskill. Next, for first grade, we have Emily Adkerson. Piper Conrad. Lauren Days. And Emily O'Neill. Our second grader, uh, Katie Randall. For third grade, we have Matthew Days. And Abby O'Neill. And then fourth grade, we have Anna Hartley McCaskill. And then at the 11 o'clock service, um, Ethan Rumitig will be recognized. He will be completing the entire program, and he's the sixth grader that participated this year. So please um, join me in congratulating these treasure hunters. Thank you all very much, and thank you for the time effort put in at the homes to memorize those Bible verses. 
Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day because it is a day of celebration. It's a day when we celebrate the birthday of your church, when you poured your spirit down upon your disciples and they became empowered to go out and witness and tell the story of the good news and bring people in and begin the work that would be your church. Help us to be proud of that moment. Help us to celebrate that moment, but help us to be a continuation of that moment that in your church today, the Holy Spirit lives and is at work. It guides us, it empowers us, it shows us what needs to be done and gives us the courage and the grace to do what needs to be done. Help us to use your spirit as wisdom, use your spirit as hope, use your spirit as love, that we might be true disciples of your son and true witnesses to all the miracles of Easter and all the miracles of Pentecost. We thank you for these children today, the ones who've been singing for us, the ones who are standing before us with their memory verses. We thank you for the hope and the love they bring to our church, and we thank you for the work they do to minister in their own ways. We thank you for the group going out to UMCOR today, the mission team going out to prepare supplies that will be sent around the world to assist people after hurricanes and floods and other disasters. Help us all to find our way to be in ministry. Help us all to find our way to be in service. As we gather today, we have, do have friends in the hospital. We have friends who are in the midst of a chemotherapy. We have friends who are trying to get their strength back after a surgery. We have friends who need your help, need your hope, need your comfort. Pour that same spirit down upon them, that they might feel the connection with you and the connection with us. And they might feel the power that will help them in their healing. We pray all these things in the name of your Son and our Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now time for our children. My fire. Good morning. Just have a seat right here. I'm so glad to see you all. Congratulations, you treasure hunter. Well, today is Pentecost. Can you say that word, Pentecost? Pentecost. Pentecost. It, it's, a, it's a good word. It's a, it's a day that the church celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. It's also the birthday of the church because it's the day that we celebrate the church worldwide. Everybody for the first time, no matter what country they were from or what language they spoke, they could hear, hey Adele, they could hear about the good news of Jesus. Now, Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Did you know that? That's why we call it the birthday, because it's the church, the church worldwide. What color do you think we use to symbolize Pentecost? Red. red. Good guess. Good guess. So we changed to red today, so that's the season of Pentecost. I want us to think about the Holy Spirit for just a few minutes. Um, Jesus promised, after he went back to heaven, that he would send someone, something to help the, his, his believers, his followers. So I want us to think just a minute about, about what the Holy Spirit might look like. Um, this is a sailboat. It's a beautiful sailboat, isn't it? What makes a sailboat go? The wind. The wind gives the sailboat its power. Can you see the wind? No, it's invisible. You can't see it, it's invisible, but it still gives power, doesn't it? What makes this radio work? Electricity, mm -hmm. electricity from when you plug it in or a battery. That's right, electricity makes it work. Electricity gives it power. Can you see electricity? Well, but you can't see it when it goes into the, into the radio. Um, you can't see it, it's invisible, it gives power. We can hear what the electricity does, doesn't it? When Jesus' believers were together after he had gone back to heaven, the Bible tells us that all of a sudden the room was filled with this mighty rushing wind. Can you make some sounds like, like wind? How do you think a strong wind would sound? Make the noise. Yeah, all of you do it. How does the, that's right, how does the wind sound? Kind of, 
we don't know what it sounds like, but the Bible said the room was filled with a rushing wind and something that looked like little pieces of fire or flame was above each of their heads. That was when the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came and gave them great power. And one of the things it did that day was it enabled them to speak in all kinds of different languages. So the people who were in Jerusalem, even if they didn't speak the native language, they could hear the story of Jesus about his death and his resurrection and what Jesus did. They could hear it in their own language. It was great, great power. And the Holy Spirit's just like that today. We can't see it, invisible, but still gives us great power. And it gives each one of us, you and me, the power to live like Jesus and the power to tell other people about him. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this Holy Spirit. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but God, we know the Holy Spirit is there with us, giving us power to follow you, to live like you, and to tell others about you. Thank you for this great gift. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 558. We are the church. We'll stand and sing all the verses. Gracious God, we thank you for every blessing. We thank you for every gift. Except these are gifts. We bring them in the name of the Christ. Amen. You may be seated.
second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Don't worry, I can get a lot done in five minutes. <laughs> Patience never was one of Simon Peter's great virtues. If you read your Gospels, you realize that the picture of Simon Peter is always running, always talking, always acting. You don't really picture Simon Peter sitting back and waiting and contemplating and studying it. His, his intentions are always good, but he, he is so eager. He's like these little guys I had in, uh, in my God and family class with the scouts. I'd ask a question and they'd all be, oh, oh, raising their hand, raising their hand. And that was when I could get them to raise their hands. But they'd all want to answer the question so badly. And that was kind of how, how Simon Peter was, just waiting for the teacher to call on him. Because you flip through the Gospels and you find Simon Peter dropping everything and immediately going and following Jesus by the lake. Uh, when Jesus out walking in the water, Simon Peter says, Lord, if that's you, let me come out and walk on the water with you. Simon was the first to say, and having the right answer this time, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But then he just blurted out, heaven forbid, when Jesus started talking about what being the Son of the living God might mean. Up on the mountain of transfiguration, when Jesus and Moses and Elijah were there and not knowing what to say, but just having to say something, it was Simon Peter who said, well, let's just build some houses. Let's just build some shacks and stay up here on top of the mountain. It was Simon Peter who, when, when everybody was worried, he said, No, Lord, if all the rest of these fall away, I will not desert you. Right or wrong, whether he th 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 thought through it, I can say that, thought through it or not, Peter always seems the first to speak, the first to act. And so waiting is not his style. So it must have been hard for him when Jesus said, I need you to wait. Wait for the power that God has promised. Waiting was the last thing on his mind at that point in time because here we are. We're after the resurrection and those last couple of weeks had been such a roller coaster up and down and confusing and not understanding. But now Jesus was alive and he realized that all that had happened had had a purpose. You know, they had come into Jerusalem and Peter, I'm sure, was thinking, this is great. People are cheering us. This is going to be a wonderful thing. He's not going to die here. He's going to take over. And they shouted Hosanna and they threw their coats down. And, and I'm sure Peter was thinking, yes, this is how you treat a Messiah. But the week just went downhill from there. The cleansing of the temple, the arguments with the scribes and Pharisees and the leaders, the Last Supper, more talk of Jesus being betrayed, more talk about Jesus dying, and then Jesus getting arrested. And you really wonder when Peter hit the low point? Was it when Jesus was killed? Or is it more likely when he denied Jesus three times? That had to be rock bottom for Peter. But fortunately for Peter, fortunately for all of us, the story did not end there. The story was not over. Come Sunday morning, Jesus was alive. And it was like a new life for Peter as well. Not only was his master alive, but the work, the promise, the good news was still alive. And Peter, he would have a second chance to prove himself. He would have a chance to get up from his mistakes, get up from his foolishness, and show his master that he really did mean everything that he had said. And you can just imagine that he was so excited and once they were convinced that Jesus was really alive and the ministry would go on, they just had to be excited, filled with joy, now ready to go out and do something. And none more so than Peter, because Peter had something to prove. All the disciples had had their weak moments, but Peter seemed to have fallen the farthest. And so now he wants to go out and show Jesus just who he is, and show Jesus what he can do. But Jesus says, not yet. Wait. Stop. You're not ready yet. I doubt they understood what he was talking about. Understanding the things that Jesus said was not always the disciples' strongest suit. But they knew enough about the man, they knew enough about what they'd been through, that if he said wait, then they needed to wait. And they probably woke up each morning saying, you feel any different today? Has, has it happened yet? Did it happen and we miss it? You know, what's it supposed to feel like? What are we waiting for? 
But then when it came, they didn't have any trouble recognizing it. The wind roared. The flame shone. Suddenly they were filled with power. Suddenly they were talking in languages that they had never known before. And the waiting was over. It was a, a noisy moment, almost like a reenactment of the old story of the Tower of Babel. All those voices speaking all those different languages. But instead of bringing division as Babel had done, these voices brought people together. People who had come to Jerusalem from all over were hearing the good news in their home language, in their own language. They were hearing the good news like it was being spoken directly to them. And so they came and they gathered and, and, and they wondered about it. They'd never heard Mesopotamian spoken with a Galilean accent, but here it was. And some of them just said, ha, we know what sort of spirits have gotten into them. And Peter, one more time, spoke up first. Listen, listen carefully. It's a little early in the morning to be drunk. Obviously, Jerusalem was not a college town. Uh, <laughs> he said, this is something different. And then he goes on, and he preaches that first sermon. And he preaches a quote from Joel that's supposed to explain the power of the Holy Spirit. But when he was through speaking, 3,000 people joined the church that day. And the wait was over. The church was begun. That power that took these disciples and made them leaders is the same power that's in our church today. It's the same power that helps these little kids memorize these verses. It's the same power that gets these young people standing up in front of a church and singing and, and playing their hearts out. It's the power that sends this group out to, to Umcor to basically work in a warehouse, but work in a warehouse where they, they store and accumulate the supplies that are needed when a tornado or a hurricane or another disaster hits. It's the power that helps us be the people that Jesus Christ needs in this day and this time. Pentecost happened about 2,000 years ago. But today, the Holy Spirit is at work, giving people wisdom, giving people guidance, giving people hope, and sending people out into the world. The wait is over. It is time to get to work. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your spirit and your power and all that it brings to us. Help us to be the people filled with your spirit that you need in your church in this day and this time. Amen. As we come to our closing hymn, I'm going to invite our UMCOR team to come and line up across the front, and we will have a prayer of commissioning. They are going to be leaving as soon as this service is over. And we, so I'll ask them to gather during the final hymn. The hymn is number 539. Let's stand and sing just the first two stanzas, verse 1 and verse 2. appreciate the work they're doing because our church is one of the great 
forces in this world that respond when there is a disaster, when there is a famine, when there is an earthquake. And part of the way we do it is we are prepared. We have this warehouse. We have materials and storage basically all over the world that are ready to go at a moment's notice. And people go down there all the time and help have the stuff ready to be done. And this is what our team is going to be doing. So I ask you to hold your hands toward them as I pray this prayer for them. We recognize you as ambassadors of Starkville First United Methodist Church in ministry to the people of the world through UMCOR. We dedicate you to service in the name of Jesus Christ. Through our prayers, we'll be united with you in your work. May God richly bless your labors, and may you go in peace and safety and come back with great stories to tell. Watch, may God watch over you, and may God give you power. Amen. They will be heading on right now, so y'all can slip on out. <laughs> We're glad that all of you were able to share in this worship. It was a very Pentecostal ser service with a lot of chaos and a lot of noise, but a lot of joy. And appreciate everyone who's a part of this today. Now may you go in peace, knowing that the love of God your Father, grace through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the power and the comfort of the Holy Spirit go with you. You'll sing the response twice straight through. <laughs>